Yeah, should we, should we look at Gvardiol barnstorming through the... That's, uh, that's more marauding, I would say. Mar marauding, <laughs> okay. Right. You say marauding, I say yeah, barnstorming. Uh, right. is more posh. But yeah, look at this. He, he's the way he wins it, and a lot of defenders here would just pass it off to the nearest man. But he, he makes that run, and what's brilliant about it, he actually curves his run to go back in position. No, it's still on for me to... <laughs> he, he sees the space, and he's like, come on, I, I can do this. The timing of the ball is perfect. And then, I mean... In, in my view, it is a penalty. The only way it's not given because it looks like he's put his hand there on Amrabat. I don't think that's enough for a foul. And you can see Amrabat touches his, his foot there. And that is a, a penalty. That's a bizarre decision not to give, isn't it? Very tough, very tough one, yeah. I mean, we all thought it's a clear penalty, but then when we saw that elbow again on the back from Amrabat, it's it's a harsh decision yeah, against uh, Guardiola. It's the power that he just runs at you. You can't actually stop him, because we're talking about Amrabat, who's also had a standout tournament, and the guy just said he can't get anywhere near him, but he is just a talent that we're going to see continue to shine. Um, he, he will benefit, Guardiola, won't he, from what happened in the semi-final against Messi? I mean, that's all part of a, of a learning curve for him, Absolutely. because the world is at his feet. Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, what, a, what a kind of experience he takes with him now. And also getting his moments of, like, with Messi, OK, best player in the world. Okay. <laughs> Take that lesson uh, and, and then move on. And he showed that today. He shook it off uh, and had a brilliant game again. So there's a lot more to come from Guardiola. Anyone could do that. I mean, Messi they could do that to absolutely anyone, yeah. though. Because if you look at the angles and what he was closing down, he did absolutely perfect. But then Messi, his acceleration to go from there to there was so quick. You know, you can't, what player you can't have you played him. up against that you're just like, oh, like... David Silva in training. Well, I couldn't get anywhere near him. Um, he was had that close control, the way he turned, the way he passed, and then you think you've got him, you go somewhere else. It was just ridiculous. What about you? I'd have to say Marta. Oh, International level, yes. just the skill, the flicks, everything. Like, 100% concentration. And if I switched off one minute, it should be gone. A goal. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the two chances that Morocco had in that, in that second half, Michael. Yeah, um, this is when it started to get a little bit spicy and Enro Ziri just pulling to the, to the back post here. See the ball coming from the left, just times his run and the both defenders go for it. I thought he actually could have went with his right foot here, but he waited for it to come on his left foot. But it's a wonderful save from the Vikings. And, you know, he's in our team of the tournament now. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like, I'd like to mention that I, I, again. But it just shows you that they, they can play at this level. This one's a little bit harder of a chance. It gets up maybe just a little bit too early. Couldn't get the direction needed. But, yeah, I was really impressed with him and the, the whole game today. Yeah, and that was with 10 seconds left of second half. The injury time, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think that's the difference when you're talking about, and even against France, because they had opportunities, it's just being clinical and having that extra something in the final third. It goes back to the point pre-match about everybody. everybody's looking for a number nine now, or yeah, everybody needs you've a striker. Kill, you've got to kill things off, and that's where Morocco has its weakness. They cannot kill things off. They cannot. They get close to the 18-yard box. They play well. Um, they're fun to watch, but then you've got to, got to finish it off, and that's where they're lacking. But, but if, you, if you were talking earlier about how Spain played in 2008, 10, 12, and that sort of taking a decade to filter through because of how it's coached for all the teams, if we're looking for number nines, we could be waiting six, eight years for a lot of countries or teams to get them until they're coached back through again, no? But it, it has to start. I mean, it has to start somewhere, you know. So when you start with the kids now or you're looking into the, the lower leagues where maybe you find some, maybe not technically wonderful players but they are very decisive in finishing things off when the ball drops in the box and they know what to do maybe not you know they are not the Messi's or the Neymar's of the world um, but uh, it it will start and we will see it down the road that the number nine has a kind of a, a revival um, Croatia throughout this tournament have been very good in the air Perisic in one of the earlier games scored a fantastic headed goal and, and their free kick for the first showed their aerial prowess. Yeah, and the importance of having different things to use like this. And when you have so many teams have set-piece coaches now for moments like this and having the bravery to be like, no, this is the one we're going to execute. But actually, that's what it comes down to, the correct execution and everyone knowing and being in the right positions. But it's so well worked, the run from Perisic. And actually, the header to get it back across goal there, the power. But, yeah. It's what we like to see. We've seen a couple this tournament, and that one is up there. 
It's the best Wurtz free kick, I think, we, we've got to say, definitely. The way um, That's everyone a great was, angle, that, said, isn't it? Just the header, it was, it was brilliant, it really was. Which is better, Perisic's header or Guardiola's header? Ooh. In that move. Ooh. I, oh. I think Perisic had to do a little bit more. The ball, what came in was a little bit flat. That was more coming to him and he just had to get a little <laughs> bit of purchase on it. So I would say Perisic is his harder. I'm not doing the actions he just did. But I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the second Croatia goal was a great goal as well, wasn't it? Oof. Yeah, I mean, it was a beauty. Even as I said before, did he really meant it? But he did, he did. <laughs> now give Osic all the, re all the credit in the world. Um, it developed here and it ended up then, they first they lost it, uh, they win it back. And then what a beauty, what a beauty. Uh, you might can discuss a little bit bonus positioning. He might be a yard too wide out um, because he had his fingertips still on the ball, but it's a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous goal. It was just the, the way he, he said it, it's like, a lot of people would have took a touch there to try and set themselves or try to cross it in, but he knew what it was on his touch. mind straight away yeah. from the way he shaped up to me. And it was a, yeah. it was a wonderful, wonderful finish. Like you said, the keeper Maybe may it could have done, have done better. Maybe another step, talking to the goalkeeper experts then, you know, a little sidestep more and then jumping up. But it's a great goal. Great goal.